great day in SimWorld, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing? Welcome to SimWorld today. It is a pleasure to be back for another week of coverage here, all things SimWorld prep. We got a big show this morning for y'all, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Yells. I'm B-Ron. Yells, how are you this morning, sir? Come on, man. You know I'm good. You know what day it is. It's Monday, my favorite day of the <laughs> week, B-Ron, and I got, oh, oh, do I have some news for you. Oh, I got some breaking, breaking news. Jay Laster, apparently, sources are telling me that he's agreeing to play for the Originators this upcoming season. So, total what? change of plans. Uh, there had been talk about him exploring his options. There had been some yep. talk about him returning to Yacht Club. And we saw the whole hubbub uh, last night or yesterday evening, uh, what, what occurred about uh, what occurred with the Yacht Club. But apparently... Again, this is sources, and I, you know, I can't confirm, but but I'm hearing Jay Laster is headed to the OGs. Be right. What do you wow. think about this? Wow, unbelievable! That is big news. You know what? Look, but like you said, there was a lot of back and forth with that whole situation. You know, him possibly going back to play with brother Marcus, and you know, play for the yacht club and all of that stuff. So to see the flip flopping continue to happen, and now we have sources. You know, saying that he's gonna go to the OGs, man, that's that's wild. I love I love that move for that. That's a great get, in my opinion. I think it's a really good move for Coach Dodge led squad. Um, if it turns out to be true, is he DJ Wagner? No. Um, but what he is is he's a versatile player. He's shown last season he's willing to sacrifice and play within a system in case he's a uh, leader. Yeah, he's a leader, and and he leads. He leads by example by you know, like I said, being willing to. To sacrifice where needed, if needed. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a perfect uh, coach dodge kind of player, and I think that that could really lead to some other dominoes following. Uh, f- excuse me, falling uh, up in the uh, the New England area. Be run. What, I mean, how you Man. feel about it? My goodness, I, I just like I'm I'm blown away because I wasn't sure what that first move was gonna be for the originators after you know losing DJ. How do you kind of replace that production and we said that it's difficult to do that uh now like you said i don't think that jay is going to replace the production of a dj wagner but he is going to bring some stability and at least some some uh hopefulness to the og's uh recruiting recruiting endeavors this off season. i de- i definitely think it i definitely think it's a good get for them and really excited to see what other pieces follow that direction for the og's now that they have uh, in my opinion, one of their uh, one of the top gets in this whole recruiting period, as far as as far as as far as current players entering the uh, or returning players, returning players going to the portal. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I tell you what, I think he's originally from Virginia, VA in the yep. house. Stand up, but um, I don't know if I ever recall somebody moving from sunny Miami up to New England. I do hear a lot of it going <laughs> the other direction, but hey. To each its own. Yeah. To yeah, each sure. its own. But uh Very true. looks like we got some more to talk about here. Arthur Lattimore. No more. <laughs> In Cascadia. Nope. Apparently he's officially out. Um well official official is a uh you know, it's a it's a it's a relative term now, but apparently he <laughs> is done in Cascadia and exploring his options. There's been a lot of talk. B run, where is he going? What do you think this move means for him? What do you think this move means for Cascadia? What do you think it means for SimWorld Prep uh as a whole? Oh uh, man, so to answer, you know, the bit about uh where he goes, that's tough. But I think that he goes back to uh Texas potentially. And I think he goes to Lone Star instead of instead of H Town. I feel like I feel like he he fits that vibe better in Lone Star than he does H Town. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Take take that take that what you will as a Houston guy yells. Take that what you will. <laughs> but I, I think he goes there. Um, as far as what this means for Cascadia, they got to And man, that it's so tough losing a player of Adam Morris caliber. We saw what he did for them last season, and he was he was the focal point of their offense. I don't care what anybody says. You can, I mean, he was the focal point of that offense. Me and I have been the guy getting all all the shots all all the shots all the time. Sheesh. But yes, he, he was. was <laughs> yes, he was. He was still the number one guy in that offense. Uh, I, I 
I said that, you know, to, to you know, combat a lot of the uh, talk going over over the weekend about Arthur Adamore, his usage, production, whatever you want to call it. You know, some people say that he wasn't getting all the all the time, whatever it was. But personally, yeah, I agree with you. He was. Um, it's gonna be tough to replace him. He is the biggest loss for them, and they have to rebuild very quickly. How they do that, I don't know, honestly. And as far as what it means for Simbo Prep, ah, man, look, it's a lot of moving, but a lot of moving going on for a lot of these uh, high school age kids. Like it's NBA free agency, so <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. The, the, the league might have to look into uh, getting some of these, uh, getting some rule changes in as far as how these players move around, that kind of stuff, because uh, I, I think there's a me. lot going on. I, I, I'll <laughs> say this. You know I'm not a big fan of it, but I don't think the, the league uh, should be mandating any rules on the movement. If the kids' family or the, the clubs have the funds to get it done, uh, so be it. We do know this was the inaugural real open yes. season uh, for Civil yes. World Prep. So the funds were flowing. Kids were moving around. I would suspect as they start tightening up their budgets and getting ready for uh, – what is what is going to be a big ride for Sim World Prep as as I think we now have established. Um, I think some of these budgets will tighten up and there won't be so much movement in it. I think I think everything <laughs> will happen okay. organically. As far as Arthur yeah. Lattimore, man, I think this opens the door for Cascadia for a young guy by the name of Tyshawn McGrady out of Seattle. Hometown kid. He was putting up twelve points a game. Not terribly efficient, but he showed a bag. A, a yeah. nice big Birkin bag, uh, too. <laughs> I mean, he had a tool bag, so I think this will open the door for him. I think they'll probably run some offense through him, depending on who else they get in. And maybe my man Jetson Holiday gets some more looks because he has an absolute cannon uh, as, as for a jumper from three. Uh, Arthur Lattimore himself, I agree uh, with Gabe Pope. Maybe he didn't play a whole lot of minutes in uh, – you know, he really didn't. I think he only played around 22, 23 minutes a game. But when he was in there, I mean, he got maximum usage. The ball flowed through him, and it should have. It should have. Yeah. I don't have, I don't think that anything else happened that, that shouldn't have. I think Coach uh, Pope did what he was supposed to do. Get him in the damn ball and get yeah. out the way. Can I cut you up for a quick second? No, go for it. So you said you said, you said said he, he didn't play a lot of minutes. 22 minutes in a, what, a 32-minute game? Yeah. That's a lot of minutes. I'm just saying, B-Ron, if I'm coaching that team, <laughs> look, look, everything I'm saying, but I, my point is if I'm coaching in Sim World Prep, uh, Arthur Lattimore and a few other guys last season, for that matter, mm -hmm. they're playing 32 minutes, no less than 30. Like, I'm, I'm only getting them out, like, when there's a quick break, and I'm running usage through them. I'm going to see if I can get them to average 40. Like, I'm, I'm just being honest. Okay. When you okay. have – there's, you. there's tears you. to these to these kids, you. in my opinion. There's some good – there's some there's some kids who are developing – there's some good kids, and there's some kids that you can tell right now are going to the. They're going pro, um, and they're going to be good at the pro level. And those guys, I'm giving them. I'm giving them all the action if it's me. Arthur Lattimore is one of those cats, six nine, two twenty six, um, playing on the elbow. Man, the dude's cold. Um, but as far as where he goes, <laughs> yeah. I like Lone Star, too. I think that'd be a good look for him. I think there's a few options, but it's got to be somewhere where he can get the kind of usage he got uh, last That's year, big. in my opinion. Because if, you, if yeah. you're not able to get him that kind of those kind of touches, what's the point? So Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And and, and uh, the only thing about Lone Star, now that I think about it, is Nene Gibson's returning. And I don't think he's going to be the kind of kid who wants to uh, take with some of his touches. I could be wrong. That's just that. That's just my uh, present, my, my belief. Nene Gibson would, would have to show up Nene every Nene. night, in my opinion. For uh, I, I haven't seen a consistent Nene Gibson since since uh, since this whole league got started. So I digress. Let's move on, B Run. <laughs> what else yeah, we got yeah. on the slate? So so there has been, a, 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 as we've seen, a lot of move, moving going on on both sides between the coaches and players and that kind of stuff. But. Now that we're entering, now that, and recruiting is an ever ongoing thing. So, you know, with that comes making promises to kids mm. and that kind of stuff. So, with, the, with those kind of things come trust. And trust, one of the things that, you know, it's, it's, uh, once you, once you gain it, it's great, but it can be lost in the of a finger. So, and, you know, there were rumblings. Over the weekend, when De'Aaron Cruz committed to the Yacht Club verbally, um, that uh, you know, Coach Mar Coach Marcus Laster had to kind of 
smooth things over in, in his locker room and play damage control a little bit. So there's a lack of trust. I'm not picking on Marcus Lass in particular. It's a general, general, general topic here, but there's lack of trust, in, in, lack of trust in coaches. Maybe that, maybe that's fueling a lot of these player move, player movements, that kind of stuff. What do you think about that? Well, look, get ready, man. Um, you see me climbing. There's a soapbox in front of me. <laughs> I'm getting ready to climb on top man. of this thing. It's that time. It's Monday morning soapbox. I don't know what a soapbox <laughs> is. What is that? Anyway, I'm climbing on top of my soapbox here, man. In life, right? Here's the deal. People can say what they want. We all say a lot of things with our mouths, but our actions and how we actually operate internally is a lot different, right? Humans yeah. are complicated, complicated creatures, man. Okay. And um, yeah. but still, so simple. And the simple fact of the matter is, most people, no matter what we say, we don't force people to earn our trust. Now, I say I'm a, I'm built a little different. I've been through some things, and there's a few people. But I would say the vast majority of people say they have people earn their trust. But honestly, people give their trust and you know what that means when you give your trust because uh, that's how the most of the world works because we believe in the best of people we want to believe yeah. in our coach we want to believe in our friends we want to believe in our spouse and mate you want to believe in these people so you give them right. your trust right right yeah. but what, what happens if something is given it can it, only go it down away. It can only go down, b -Ron. So you, you're you at the disadvantage of only lowering um, someone's trust in you unless you have, you know, that upstanding character to say, I'm holding firm to what I said no matter what. Or, as we talked about on a previous show, you are willing to communicate at a high level when things are going to change from what you said to something yeah. else. So. Uh, communication is key here. I absolutely think that some of these kids are thinking about their futures and like, yo, I see what you did in this situation. Uh, what might you do in this next situation? Or is your word actually bond? Or even furthermore, why should I give you my word um, if yours doesn't mean anything? Uh, yeah. trust, stops at, trust starts at the top. Um, and I definitely think these kids are factoring it in there, b -Ron. I'm yeah. off my soapbox, man. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Look, I agree with all of what you said there. Uh, trust is very important, especially when it comes to making promises to players and even, you know, their parents in, in some cases. You parents have to please too, them too. Yes. You have to please them too. And, you know, when you when you as a parent give your – you put your trust in a coach and say, hey, you know, you're going to look off my kid with us for them, that kind of thing. And then things happen around that that, you know, the coach leaves or whatever it is, you know – that as as the as a parent, that's a teachable moment both for you and your child. So you got to think about all that too. Be right. I'm teaching. I'm gonna do some tea. You know what? Because you just made me. You know how I love metaphors. That's a great one you throw there. Because you know yeah. what this is like. These parents handing over. This ain't the pros, man. This is this is this is high school age kids still. Man. Yeah. These are you know they're still developing, still figuring out how to make decisions, and their parents are handing them over to you. It's a lot like it's a lot like being a dad with a daughter. And um, I'm not there yet. Now I'm telling you now where this is going. So when that yeah. dad, when you got a daughter and prom's coming around, and you walk your daughter down, you know your daughter's looking beautiful. You've seen her getting ready. She's so excited. And whoever this dude is at the door, you're handing him off to her. You're handing her off to him for the night with the yeah. expectation that he's going to do the right thing so that you don't have to kill him. Right. <laughs> that's what this is here. Yeah. So that's a that's a great that's a great parable there, man. I I appreciate the the parents. They're handing yeah. they're trusted they're trusting you in a major way. So yep. yeah, exactly, exactly. Speaking of trust, man, uh, best coach balls, Coach Dominguez. He's I think he's earned himself a lot. I think he's earned himself a good bit a good bit of trust. Getting his first verbal commit from DJ Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big move for them. So you know. <laughs> We talked about best coast having to try to rebuild after the, the LDO era and all of that. You know, are the tides turning for best coast? Is this just a sign of things to come for them? Because DJ Davis, we saw him a few weeks ago in, in that uh, SummerSlam thing, uh, the trade the Trey J, Trey J SummerSlam uh, event that they had there. He showed off. So I think that's a good move for them. And then, uh, like I said, tides are turning in that direction for best coast. So what tide, what direction are they turning from, B-Rome, before I answer this question? Where are you saying so, that they were? So before, when you're talking about trying to have to replace, replace eight LDL. members of your roster and, you know, rebuild after losing Lathers Outlaw, who uh -huh. was the most dominant player on your team, 
mm-hmm. you know that that in my opinion you don't you don't have a starting point there okay. To, okay. To, to to go from so you didn't so the, the tide wasn't going the tide was trending away from you in my opinion now that you have dj davis does that say that signal? Hey, maybe we, maybe this time start moving forward, and we can start to build from here and build a competitive team, perhaps. Um, I think so. Absolutely think so. Um, and here's why: um, Coach Big Nino in the house. Um, yeah, that team was built around LDO last season, and I would say, if I recall correctly, I think that's one of the reasons Montel Cage left uh, Best Coast Ballers because he wanted more of an opportunity in Cascadia. Now, if that went down the way he wanted, you know, it's, that's neither here nor there. But he yeah. got out of Best Coast <laughs> because LDO was so dominant. And not in a not in a, not in a, uh, a ball hog, you know, kind of way. Just that's how the game went. But right. with LDO gone, so, so I, I'm sorry, let me make my point with that. That whole team, in my opinion, there were some talented kids there. Um, Dre Ryder, I think, is still there. I, I loved Evangelos Mullins. Dre Ryder think, is still there, yep. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see some craziness from Evangelos at the, uh, at the SWUB level. Um, but nobody really got a chance to shine like that um, from it, with LDO on the team. Um so I think the door is open for more players to have opportunity. And I think this is the first domino to fall for Best Coast where they can see, hey, there's more than a Showtime or a Bay Area out in Cali. And and my last point on that, and my main point is DJ Davis, you may not be hearing his name a whole lot um, out there in the media, and that's probably good. But I tell you what, <laughs> these kids, these kids and these scouts and these coaches, they know the talent DJ Davis is. And – I think he's around like 20, 2019, 20, 20 uh, composite ranking overall. Uh, I think before it's all said and done, he'll be a lot higher than that. Um, and this is on the recruit side. But people know that this dude is supremely talented. And I think some people want to play with him uh, because of his style of play. Yeah, DJ Davis uh, is joining Dre Ryder and Landon Coilton in best coast maybe we'll see jamie ramos go there a few other california there's plenty of talent in california in that area so but i'm expecting that team to be full of california kids in that in in that front section on, on your on your roster dockets you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be real fun over there be real fun over there i think for them this season yeah true indeed true indeed true indeed true indeed well look keep it moving here yeah yep benari james Headed to Philly? I tap ah. on this one, B-Ron. What you got? Yeah. <laughs> so there was a tweet that went out before, before, we, before we started the show here. And I was like, well, we got to change some things around here. <laughs> so uh, decided to move this one in here. And, yeah, uh, this is crazy. Nas Hall, apparently, and Benari have been in, been in uh, conversation, talking, that kind of thing. And, you know, spent a lot of time together, that, that kind of thing. So, man, that's going to be nasty. If those two can get together, I don't. I feel like both of them, though, are players who need the ball in their hands. So I don't see it happening, but it's fun to think about. It's like it's like it's like it's like a, a, a conspiracy theory. Fun to think about, but I'm not thinking. I'm not. I'm not putting any stock in it personally. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I, I feel the same way. Be Ron Nas Hall. Uh, he was ball dominant enough at times last season. Where I'm like, hey, come <laughs> yeah. off that rock, son. Come off that rock. Um, you got a couple guys there. AJ Frost can go get you a bucket. And Orlin Mock. I'd like to see the ball in his hands a little bit more. Um, Benari James. I say all that though. I think that he would be exactly what Philadelphia needs. I know last season I saw a lot of perimeter shots go up. Uh, from Nas Hall, <laughs> but uh, from other <laughs> players where I didn't think perimeter shots should have went up, and I saw guys attacking that weren't finished. You know what Benari James does? Finishes exactly. at the rack. Yes, Rod Strickland style, like stop me from getting this bucket right here at the rim. Um, so I think he'd be a perfect fit, but do I think this is a realistic thing that's going to happen? No, I think I think I have some ideas on where Mr. James, James Gang is headed, so uh, I don't think it's illy, but it would be. Yeah. It would be exciting to see. It definitely would be. It definitely would definitely would be exciting to see. But you know what else is exciting, Els? M- me. Tyson Simpson. Oh, okay. Yes, you. <laughs> 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 Tyson Simpson has finally committed, and oh. he did not choose Duke. I can't believe it. I can't believe. It. I think all of us thought he was going Duke. 
because um, they were on the radar. I mean, even if he would have switched it up and went, you know, North Carolina or Kentucky or something, but I, I didn't see Virginia happen. I'm not sure if there's some Virginia, family right. there. Virginia? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, no knock to VA, but, yeah. uh, you know, what's going on here? What's the connection? Um, right. What What's the connection he has with Coach? What is he anticipating for his career? I think I saw Rick Blaze and a few others making some uh, some comments that uh, they were out, they were – they were extremely adversarial, but I can't say that they were wrong at all. I don't remember the last time I seen a big man coming out of VA, but maybe maybe the tides are turning, man. Look, it's not all about what the franchise has done. It's about what they're going to do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I, I, um, when I saw it, I'm like, I, I was like, the, I was like, you know, uh, Soldier Boy, Drake, Virginia, <laughs> like, what? Virginia, really? Okay, interesting. Uh, I feel like there's another big that played in Sim World Prep two seasons ago that's there now, or looking some, or I'm thinking of. I, mean, I, th- I, might, I might be thinking of Richmond is uh, uh, Richmond the Spiders instead of Virginia. I'm yeah, I think so. Them. Think so. Uh, I think of Stefan Johnson Odom from uh, Gotham Five years ago, few, few seasons ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, man, I, man. He's gonna be good though. Like, good. He's, he's, he's gonna be good. I think he's. Oh, it's oh, gonna be. I'm it's sorry. gonna be. I'm a, sorry. He's gonna be wrecking. elite. Yeah. Elite. <laughs> it's gonna be a wrecking machine, man. I didn't realize. Shout out to the uh, to the production team put together a mixtape for him. I like that yeah. thing. But I didn't. I you know I think he's a baller. I think he's incredibly yeah. dominant. There's times where I said he reminds me of a young Shaq, and people want to slap me upside my head. But after I watched that uh, that mixtape. I forgot. I have to agree with you. I have to agree. How dominant he was! Like, yeah. good lord. So you know, if he gets more aggressive, it could it could be even scarier. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulations absolutely. to you, uh, young man. Excited for you and your journey. Hey, uh, also shout out to the next uh, show hitting SimWorld TV before we get out of here. I hear, I hear yeah. him too. I hear him too, Biron. <laughs> but uh, yeah. OTR off the rim. Coach is putting something together, some initiative going on around here. Uh, we help facilitate it here at Sim World TV. So shout out to you guys. We're looking forward to seeing what you all are doing. Coach Drees, Coach Drayton, and Coach Skinny. So looking forward to that. What's that? Saturday at 6. We'll be tuned in. We will be tuned in. And thank you all for tuning in to today's episode of Sim World Today. First of the week, we'll see you tomorrow for another episode. Until then, you guys, you know what to do. Just because it's the off season doesn't mean you can't see the game. Be the game. You all have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy Monday.